actually been in the tech industry for around 35 years. Uh, you might not believe that, but that's actually true. Uh, I uh, first started as a developer back in the days in the 80s and 90s, and then I uh, went to uni. Uh, at, uh, so I was a um, uh, master student trying to code at the same time. Then I went to McKinsey to learn some uh, tech companies how to do strategy consultancy. And then uh, I was at Spotify in 2010. Uh, there I started to build out the analytics team, and we were very early on at Spotify to figure out how can we use all that data to grow companies faster? How can we build better products when we have actually access to every single click of every single user? It was a fascinating time, and we were pioneering the way how we could use that to grow faster. Uh, then after that, I brought that knowledge with me to start a ventures fund together with partners in, uh, in Stockholm 2. Uh, where we did uh, somewhere around 100 investments and we applied a lot of AI to figure out what the next company that we should invest in should be. But uh, now I'm a co-founder of uh, a, a new company called Arc, and, and at that company I also act as a CPTO. And I wanted to give you that as a case study to, see, to tell you how we are thinking and how we are, are applying AI to, to solve our mission. But before that I wanted to start with some observations. So during these years that I've been around in the tech industry, I've seen a lot of bubbles come and go. So I did see uh, the big golden dot com bubble come, uh, did uh, a lot of fun, crazy stuff back then, and then everything crashed. I saw the whole valuation bubble come and go the last recent five, 10 years, where the whole everything completely hyped and then collapsed. Uh, we did see the mobile bubble come, and eventually they might, might crash too, who knows? Uh, but we've also seen a lot of uh, 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 development in the AI uh, trends over this, this period. And I thought it's always fun with data, so I did uh, select some Google search data to figure out what's the state of the AI winter right now. Uh, and the green line here shows the uh, Google search volumes for artificial intelligence. In the, in the beginning on the left side, it's 2004. You can see it, it was popular, but it was actually in a decline. Uh, so we had this AI winter, as we all know. Actually, I, I then singled out the Hadoop search term, because when I was at Spotify, we were early on in 2010 to pick on Hadoop, which was the very first infrastructure to collect raw events of every single user at scale. So that was pivotal for us to be able to do the next generation analytics and artificial intelligence. And as you can see in this chart, that was probably one of the reasons for what actually created the data sets that the AI really wanted or needed to, to, to work. So this is now on the other side of Hadoop. Uh, the, we have all the tools and all the data needed to actually have the functioning of AI that we all wanted. And at the very right, you can see the, the AI spring that we're now experiencing. But the biggest reason of all of this is, of course, the GPT. And it's just hats off to Sam. It was so, so fun to hear him talk to us now. And how the search terms for GPT have completely dwarfed everything else that we've previously known as artificial intelligence popularity. So that's a fascinating time to be alive. But when thinking about all of this great, uh, great developments, it's also, I think, important to think about the rest of society. What are we doing there? For example, in healthcare and education and in the, in the climate questions, there is a lot of things that have happened. But frankly, I think we all feel like we're lagging a bit behind. We've seen great uh, specific developments and, inter and um, great ideas coming, popping up in all these three different sectors but we have not yet seen the spring of these sectors coming out. So hopefully we will see now the AI driving the moment of the healthcare spring coming up next, after we've now seen the AI spring coming. Um, so that's uh, interesting to think about. And I think AI, where we are right now, really opens up to a lot of opportunities that we've spoken about today. Uh, and think about now uh, those two, so some of those examples. For healthcare, for example, we know that everyone knows in here, and everyone talks about this, that if we ha would have had proactive healthcare advice from doctors, for people, for every individual human, they would live he uh, have healthier, uh, healthier lives. It's just that it's way too expensive to have doctors actually giving those advice in a proactive way. So the healthcare system doesn't cope with that. We don't have the, the money to do that, which means that we're not, um, uh, we're not feeling that. Could now AI be the generator to actually facilitate that? That's a very interesting question, I think. And the other uh, similar question is in education. We all know that individual learning would be, mean so much for every person. All the teachers that I know, they talk about it all the time and how difficult it is to do mass learning in classrooms. Now with the AI that we have now, is this the reason, is this the pivotal point where we could actually get that individualized learning? I think those are two very, very important questions uh, that we could actually 
hopefully now see the day of light from. So when I think about AI, the, I, I could think about it in two, two different categories to not forget them. Because the one hand is the completely new discoveries. We heard previously about the new ways of detecting lung cancer or even detecting lung cancer where it might happen. I think that was super fascinating. We will see a lot of those completely new discoveries, which are awesome. But the other category is also the accessibility, which I think is an uh, equally great opportunity here. So to take what we know works today, some, some people giving expert advice, but that is today only uh, accessible for a few limited set of people. How can we use AI to now uh, get access to that kind of expertise to many more, to the mainstream? That's a very interesting uh, opportunity, I think. And when you think like that, I think AI will completely transform every single industry into thinking like this. And uh, some people talk about the jobs will disappear with AI, but I think the completely opposite here. Think about all the, the sectors here that will have to transform in this new way, where you can actually give accessibility to things that were previously not accessible for, uh, for, for the mainstream. That's what now is going to be possible. So I think uh, the opportunities here with, that AI shows is, is tremendous, and, and the jobs that that will create to, to drive that transformation is, is fantastic. So at ARC, uh, our company now, we believe that entrepreneurs will lead this transformation. I think we've seen that in the past, that entrepreneurs are the driving force of, of sparking new innovation. And I think that's exactly what, we wanna, what will happen now, too. So that's exactly what we built ARC for. So we want to unlock that power of entrepreneurs to actually lead this transformation. So let me tell you about ARC. So we are trying then to democratize the growth forecasting and growth financing using AI. So one of the things that I did at Spotify was to build a growth forecasting engine that helped us to grow much faster than you could do without it. It's complex to do, but it helps you really, really much to become iterative and fast uh, innovator and grow, grow faster than what you could do without it. That tool, uh, is to have a platform like that, is something that a lot of founders would really benefit from having. The same goes for financing. We know that financing of growth companies is something that is limited to only a few set of, of founders today. But using AI, we can actually get to a point where we can get that kind of financing to many, many more uh, founders. That's what we're doing. So we have created a platform which we call AIM. This platform lets founders connect all their different platforms that they use, like HubSpot we just talked about before. Uh, but everything, every click, every event, every transaction, everything that you have in your company, we co they can connect that to this platform. And then we give that uh, analytics platform back to those founders for free. So this is a bit complex to do. It, it uh, talks about we have a billion rows per company on average that comes in. We do two and a half million cohorts forecasts for every company that we look at. And out comes all the different metrics and forecasts that we know that founders would benefit from having. We also use this to uh, create a growth loan that hasn't been possible to do without it. So this is a, a growth loan that is non-dilutive, does seven-year uh, payment terms where you can wait three years until you start to amortize it. This is to really complement the VC uh, money that we have in the market today, because here founders can really continue to invest in their growth throughout the J-curve, come out on the other side, be profitable, and then pay back the, the loan. So we think those two tools, the, the platform and the growth loan, will really help many more founders out there to grow. So what we found is that this uh, model is both an individual model that works uh, for a specific company because it looks at your specific numbers and your specific analysis using all that data. But it's also universal. It's the same analysis that you want to do regardless of where you are as a founder. It doesn't matter if the company is here in Boston or in Stockholm. Um, so we think that we can build this number one platform for all the world's entrepreneurs to achieve this. And that's very fascinating. So to finish off, uh, we think uh, this old saying that brains are equally distributed, opportunities are not, is what we're changing because we think we will, that will actually be that in the future. So thank you for your time and uh, happy entrepreneuring.